No, they don't mean on the badge and you just have the first names. Well, it's a problem because either between my job or my husband. Let's see if they can hear me. <laughs> pretty much everybody. <laughs> and they know who I am. Yeah. So I have to behave myself. Well, most of them okay, are Tad can says he can hear yeah, now. Can hear at least. All right, we are good. Okay, uh, public hearing portion uh, proposed amendments to City Code Title 11 21 11 49 11 5 10. So no one here, I assume, that has any comments, and anybody out there does not appear to be so. Okay, we'll move on. Proposal to amend 10 to 1. And then the online one, did it say something? No one's hands are raised. Well, I, I was going to have uh, Wayne give a brief summary when we're in the work session. But, yeah. Uh, I figured people are going to make a public comment. They, they know what they're right. commenting on. But, um, I don't so, see anybody on my yeah. saying that they want to No, I don't see that either. So, uh, 10 to 1, no comment. Item 3, proposed total change of title of the city development and construction standards to city development and construction standards for subdivisions. Okay. Item 4, proposal to amend the portion of the city code titles 4, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, look, at, we get to discuss when it's hard when it comes on the work session, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yep. what I was figuring. All right, well, then uh, we'll close the public hearing portion and uh, move on to the work session. All right, item five proposed amendment to city code title 1121, 1149, and 1510. Wayne, if you could provide us with your summarization of this um there's a letter that that we wrote that's in your packet uh as a result of our public hearing that we had um i don't know if it'd be easier to answer questions that you have or to explain those to you um i whatever whatever works Maybe just a, a high level overview of the, the nature, kind of like you and I talked about. Okay. The, def the definitions that we're looking to change have the words open space in them. Um, we've had some people who inter are interpreting those as uh, nouns when they're in, meant to be adjectives, uh, describing the area around a home. Um, some of you are familiar with the term open space as, as it is uh, established within a subdivision, an area that's open for, for maybe recreation purposes, like a park or um, just to have a, an open area that's not encumbered with, uh, with homes. Um, we got in a situation where some were looking at a yard, side yard, and that term was included in the definition, said a side yard is an area, da 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 da, from the house to the property line. It's generally undisturbed and uh, is, is left open type thing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's not correct. People put swing sets or people put gardens or whatever else they want to do, whether it's on the side of their house or the back of the house. Yeah. So it was being used incorrectly. So what this does is just remove the word open space from those definitions. And we're just calling it an area, which is already there. Right. It's, so that's a change. And that's why we're making it because it's being misinterpreted. Uh, in definitions that are, that are being used in, in improperly, we feel. And it's never been interpreted as you can't put anything on the side of your house or the back of your house. It has to be undisturbed and that sort of thing. We never used it in that sense at all. Right. So, so do we have 
every you know the, the definition of open space usually means well if it's private it may it be like hoa type of, sure. um park but our open space in our city would be um <coughs> any public lands that are open for public use ah, yes because we have public land that is not open for public use like the water tanks and several other places but um but we can continue with that definition for those public spaces and if <coughs> then with um, development agreements or whatever we can say your open spaces for public use in in their development overall correct or private yes. use yeah or private use if that's however yeah. they yes so uh and we found that we did have a definition of open space in title 10 mm -hmm. but we don't in title 11 having to do with subdivision so We've, I guess there's two options that, that we have is to use the same definition in Title 11 that we use in Title 10 for open space or the one that we've proposed. They both say the same thing in different ways. So right. it really doesn't matter if, if we want to have consistency to that definition in both the zoning ordinance Title 10 and the subdivision Title 11. We can do that, or we can make them a little bit different, but they say the, the same thing and imply the same meaning for open space. So that's that's with open space. Mm -hmm. um, do you want me to go on to the other yeah, definitions? Okay. Unless anybody has any questions. Well, I'm just assuming this is, this is pawns, right? Not pounds. Is it pounds? I'm yeah. sorry, that it's okay. pawns, yeah. Like, we're good. Type they know what a pound was. British money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, we need a lot of that. Mine says, well, on, on, the, on our agenda tonight, it, it does say pond. Yeah, you oh, probably okay, it's a letter the maybe that yeah, we wrote a and I it was the letter that had it. Yeah. Issue. So we had a public hearing. Is there, like, is there a reason anyone would object? To the we didn't have any comments on, well, okay. we had a written. A written comment yeah. to not do make these changes, but we had no public comment because the individual who objected to it is wants to use those to prevent a neighbor from putting a retaining wall on the side of the yard. Oh, okay. So now you're disturbing the soil and et cetera, et cetera. So that was the primary objection in the written comment that we got for. So how would how would this definition change a retained? It takes out the word open space. So open space is not used anymore. Now we're just defining it as an area. It, it, it doesn't have to be open space. A person could put a garden there if they want to. But the and way open like space is used. And that's, that's consistent with how it's been utilized Historic. Oh, yes. Historic. This is not a departure from anything that we've been doing. It's just a Our practice is because people are yeah. um, interpreting it differently. They're thinking open space means like open land with there's you no can't touch. Like nothing is undisturbed. Yes. Yeah. Can't put anything there. Yeah. I mean, we've hmm. never done that. People put up their garden. I have my whole yard is retaining mm -hmm. walls because the moment is built. Right. Yeah, I mean, again, it goes back to if we were building down on the flatlands, you might be able to have one definition that works for everywhere, but we've got such different topography. Well, we just removed the word, the two words, open space, and left the rest of the definition the way it is. Yeah, okay. So, so you're just cleaning it up, basically. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, on the um, development and construction standards, they, um, when we did the codification, we, we 11, 11, oh, what, okay, let me go in order. What is just that make one? Sure, just make sure we're going in order so we, conditions for an inch. Okay. No, I, except I think you're talking item seven, the changing of the title, right? Is that what you're going? I just wanted to know which right. number we're okay. talking to. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. We go in order, 1149. We'll take that one next. Uh, conditions of issuing a building permit. Paragraph A, there's no change to that, but it's part of that. So we've included that. Paragraph B is the one that is uh, we're adding. 
And it has to do, the city has never had a, uh, an ordinance requirement for once a construction is finished, for, for whatever changes were made uh, that were approved for them to give the city uh, what used to be called as built drawings. Mm -hmm. Now they're called record, record documents, yeah. which is a more official name for them. In the field, a contractor, they continue to call them as built, but once, once it goes through the engineer and they're more formalized, then they refer to them as record documents. We've never had a requirement for a developer to provide to us record documents of the changes that they've made to the construction drawings that they've had. And often there are changes. So we're putting in the ordinance then a requirement that once the construction is completed, that the developer has to provide the city, which we retain record documents, documenting all the changes that they may have made during the course of, of construction. These are changes that, that, that uh, really were required. They weren't optional to them because the way they got in, maybe there was uh, already a, a service line that went somewhere and they had to go around it. Uh, those kinds of changes are, are what we're referring to as part of the record documents. So, and we will retain those here in the city for years as, as just kind of how the construction ended up being done. So it's, it's basically the same as it has built used to be, but now the form, the more correct term is just record, record documents. documents. Correct. So, so it's not requiring anything different than what they. Were but but we haven't been requiring as built documents. Oh, so, so, oh so that's that's an important thing. It right? is. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little confused, but hopefully I won't stay that way. <laughs> because the. Letters and emails we've been getting from certain people have been claiming that that's that's one of the bigger parts of their beef is that they the as built should have been like they're demanding that we turn over these records and you're saying that our ordinance has never required them to be submitted. You're, you're if, talking two different things. Okay, yeah, help me understand. We're talking where subdivisions, I'm, right? Correct. If okay. there was a change okay, in so not house, construction, house construction, right, those need to be updated no. and provided to the city with approval. Go ahead, Corbett. State code does not allow us to require updated plans on a house. We can't. You don't, I mean, you don't have a choice. You can't require them to update the plans unless it's a requirement of geotech or a geo, uh, geologic engineer. Those are the only two issues that, and, and that's and, and that's talking earthquake. You know, you it's, you dig the hole and you find a you find a fissure or a a, a splay they call. Them. Then you can require plans to be updated. <clears throat> Other than that, you don't get a choice. All you you have to accept amendments to the original document. Now on a subdivision, and and we have that on 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 the house. On a subdivision, you're talking an as built that documents where all of the infrastructure is. Okay. Okay. And, and that's critical yeah. to know where that is for posterity. And, and, and I might just counsel the council that this is this has kind of been a, a, a bit of a ongoing bone of contention is the difference between the requirements for a subdivision versus the requirements for building a house. And I don't get the difference still. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it, it, it does become a little bit confusing. And so when we're talking about ordinances, it's really important that we differentiate because Summit Creek is a subdivision developer. So they're building multiple, they're, they're developing land with the intent to subdivide it and then uh, send it to the county to be platted. That's a subdivision. Whereas when I go and buy a lot and then I build a house, that's a different process. It's completely different. The subdivision's already been approved. They're not the same. And that's part of the reason for this next name change mm -hmm. is to just emphasize the difference between those two worlds. 
Yep. Because they're not the same. So Summit Creek plays in both of those worlds, depending on what phase they're in, correct? They, they do play in both of the worlds, yeah. but so if they're working on the development, road, street, infrastructure, platting, all of that, they're on Title 11. Correct. Correct. But they're in Title 10. If they're, they're, building, 10, a they're building the house. Building a house. Right. Okay. However, however, and I again it's important to be clear here. We haven't always been clear in these areas. So we've got some stuff that's kind of a little bit mixed in on our code, sprinkled in our code in, that we do. It rate it's primarily with the development and construction standards. It pertains to any construction. Gotcha. Right. So if somebody's building a driveway at a home, they have to follow our development and construction standards that happen to be in our sub part of our subdivision ordinance. But that criteria they have to follow. Gotcha. So yeah, it's a little, it's, it, we would do well, especially as we move forward to do our best to clarify the differences between those two worlds. Because, you know, again, I'm gonna hand Summit Creek a document and say, you're developing a subdivision. So this is what you need to follow. Whereas a home builder, we're going to hand them a different book that says, this is what you have to follow. And we need to have, we need to have the right information in the right place. Right. And we don't right now. Well, and some people traditionally think when they see the word subdivision, they're thinking a whole bunch of homes going in. It says subdivision, where subdivision is really just planning that property into buildable lots. And then so there's there's those two different things happening at the same time that you know I, I'm building, I'm using subdivision codes, I'm doing this, whatever, right? And so people sometimes get confused. There's and let me let me address another topic directly related to that where we're suggesting back when our codes were codified a couple of years ago. Um, there was a portion of the development and construction standards titled hillside site development mm -hmm. that a certain group in the city wanted those included in the code itself they were part of our development and construction standards and so the city took a part of that and put it in another place as well as left it in the subdivision uh and in, in development and construction standards which is a part of our title 11 subdivision so we're suggesting to the council now to Remove that from from the uh, Title Eleven and and put it back over or leave it where it is. It's it's already there. It just it causes confusion because it's not in the title code completely. It's only partly there, and we're suggesting let's take that partly out and just leave it where where it is, and and. So this is what happens when, when a subdivision is developed, the engineers have to make sure that, for example, if there's 35% grade on that particular lot, that's a non-buildable area. And that's identified on the subdivision plat that you can't build there because it's over 35%. And our ordinance says, if there's a 35% slope, it can't be graded can't be built on. Right. So um, when we look at um, a site plan for a home, somebody comes and says, okay, I wanna put my home, but I wanna, I wanna go outside this building envelope a little bit more, it's a big home, but the grade is 35% over there. We, we enforce, we say, I'm sorry, you can't do that. Our ordinances don't allow that even though we're past the subdivision stage, now we're looking at site plan review, we'll enforce that subdivision portion of that ordinance on the site plan and don't let them grade or build on that 35% grade. So they come into play in both places. And if a homeowner wants to do that, we say, I'm sorry, you can't do that. It's against our code. So therein gets the mix a little bit uh, with, with being enforced to both as a sub part of the subdivision ordinance 
as well as our zoning and land use ordinance and then Title 10. Okay. Where this comes into play is going back to that omnibusman's report, they, as I read it, it basically said, it doesn't matter where in your code land use things are, you have to pay attention to all of them. If it's land use, it's land use. So. Yeah. All right, any other questions on uh, that? On those those changes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. No did you have anything else on, on these remaining? Yeah, on the remaining ones, like 10 to 1. Oh. All of those yeah, are those saying. definitions. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. We're on definitions now. Um, 10 to 1, we've talked that's the open space in um, and the rear having to do with the rear yard and the side yard, um, taking the words open space out of those definitions mm -hmm. for the purpose intended. The, um, and we've talked about the city development and construction standards. Um, then item four are your agenda items the four with the title codes for mm -hmm. eight mm -hmm. nine ten and eleven uh -huh. that has to do with the clarification primarily and we've had and this comes from our attorney they've reviewed this and made these recommendations to us to better clarify our zoning enforcement officer and our building official in those codes and they even developed a new one, I think it's in Title IV of a um, medical, is it medical officer, Jody, medical health, health maybe health, health officer, officer. Saying, so, which we don't have, mm -hmm. yes, but no. they've clarified that in, that in that particular title. If we ever need one, that function is there. Which previously, if I if I understand correctly, in a lot of these places, it used the term building inspector. Yes. Right, and that's where we went to the Yeah. Which, that worked as long as we only had one building inspector. But now that we're contracting the building inspection part out, then Corbett's role really is not as the building inspector, it's the, he's the building official. And the building inspector is whoever happens to get assigned by that company to do the inspection. Corbett can still do building inspections, but his term implies, or his title implies a much wider, wider responsibility. Mm -hmm. And the building inspector is very narrowly. Well, and defined. I might add, and, and this kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier about you know Summit Creek sometimes being the subdivision developer, sometimes being the builder. The way I think about it is all of us have different hats that we wear, mm -hmm. but we only wear one hat at one an time. instance. Yep. So if I am now acting as a city council member, then I have that hat on. If I'm, you know, working at my work, then I have a different hat on and it's a different function. So we need to think in terms of the functions, not necessarily the person. Is the person may change, whereas the functions hopefully should remain consistent. So that's the purpose behind those, and they uh, this kind of was done a little bit in conjunction with the appeal authority changes, but this leg behind that, but this will again help clarify the response better clarify the responsibilities of our of some of our city staff. Okay, so, you. okay, and then I think uh, before we move on to item nine, which is kind of a, a shift in a different direction, anybody have any further comments or questions? Well, those, well, that's in the work session, right? That's what we're in now. Yeah. 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 But before we move on to that, uh, any, any other comments or questions about the ordinance proposed ordinance changes? And we're just doing on our, the paper that Jody gave us that was five, six, seven, and eight on yeah. the work session. Yeah, and then we're on. And then so we're item nine. Wait, still on the you're group. still on there. We're nine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but this is kind of a different. Well, you're on there for ten too, so you might as well just <laughs> get cozy. Are you? Are we good? 
Kind of fencing? Yeah. Oh, well, it's funny you should ask. All right. I'm just looking. I'm like looking. Are we both Take it away. <laughs> um, we wanted to come back to you a little bit on item nine. Um, if that's a dead issue, then fine. But our intent in making this, what we thought was a fairly simple change, was to primarily eliminate the five yard or five foot setback on fences uh, with some parameters. That was our intent. Uh, as we've looked at that, just so that you know, a little bit further, there's, there's some potential other suggested changes that we might suggest to you having to do with the fencing ordinance beyond, beyond this. Huh. But we don't, want, we don't want you to beat a dead horse, the Planning Commission being the, being the dead horse, uh, and keep coming back and saying, no, 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 no. If you're done with it, and I understand everybody has their own thoughts and views on fences, if you're done with it, fine. We won't explore it further. But if, if you're open to some other changes that likely need to be made, and if, if we can work out this other idea that was the original purpose in coming to you with eliminating that, that uh, five foot uh, setback on yards, we, we're willing to pursue it. But if there's a feeling that there's no point in it, then, then we're fine and we won't take it any further. That one house down there in Four Seasons already has a fence up, so if we change it. Now, now Four Seasons is a different, a little bit of different animal. They have their own fencing ordinance down there, and it is different from the city. And they they are allowed to put it on on their property line with some restrictions. We have a resident trying to use that as an example. Yeah, we do. Um, <laughs> yeah. I clarified. Well, Doral and I helped with some understanding there. They're no longer using that one. So I, I think that what would be valuable just in this instance to Wayne's point too is just to get a general kind of idea as to where everyone falls on this. I mean, for example, the, the allowing the utilization of more of the property and not leaving that large or larger corridor. I mean, that was that was the big issue. So I mean, is everyone in general agreement that that needs to be address or is it something that uh, that alone is enough to, to kill this in, in the council's mind? I for one would love to see that eliminated. I would too. I agree. Okay. And you disagree, Dave, you think so. Yeah. It's nonsense to waste that area between two properties. Right, between the property. The only thing question, the only concern I have is on those corner lots. That that was so thirty uh, foot mm -hmm, because of site and I and also because if we ever have to expand a road or put any foot, you know the easement. A lot of people think their property goes all the way to the street when they're on a side yard or you know that abuts a street, and they would say you know even though we have to approve it, there would be some fighting going on, and I think that it's there's some things that would happen that I would like. I think we need to be more thoughtful in terms of um, for that view of site. Um, now, can, I, can I comment briefly on that particular issue? There is a process that many cities follow where they establish a, a, a triangle at that intersection on four, on four different triangles of that intersection. Depending upon the speed limit, and this goes back to the engineering process, it identifies how far that triangle goes out. And that triangle then becomes a safe space where they can't build, they can't put hedges or anything in that triangle. And it's to preserve the view then of a car coming into that intersection to see if there's other cars coming into it. So that could easily be part of our ordinance to put the a certain distance, depending upon the speed limit of that triangle at that at, on all four corners to make that a, a safe space, so to speak, so that mm -hmm. there is visibility of cars coming into the intersection. So you're saying it's, it, there's some sort of formula that's put into place so it would not necessarily be the same on every intersection, depending on 
what the topography was, depending on if, how the road slopes or if there's a turn or whatever, all and the speed limit, all of that would be in consideration. Yeah, primarily it's a speed limit. Okay, but if you've got a hill, then sure. Well, then us, that would... I, I can see several spots that people come around and and they so all say, of a you've sudden. Got both. I've got both. She's got, She's got speed. Uh -huh. hill, and hill. how many people have gone off that hill and now there's a house right there and I kind of kind of hmm. I'm yeah. hoping they keep that. I'm hoping we let them keep that berm that they have up there because there's enough people that have just come right off that side of that hill. But yeah, that's the kinds of things that I would think of in terms of, um, you know, a, a safe site distance. Yeah, with and we, all of and those we could easily do that. Considered. I, I I'm, 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 on, I'm on board with that. I would love to see also the setback off of street to be phrased off of edge of asphalt. Instead you of be right of way. Yeah, edge of right of way. Well, so whatever because that's the city's right yeah. of way. So it. It even extends it a little bit further. If we have right of way, right? Is yes. the right of way typically a standard? Yes, it is. No, I say, yes. So I would say, if we can, just for the sake of ease for our residents, if we can just say off of edge of asphalt, anybody and their dog can go out there and measure off of edge of asphalt. Mm -hmm. So if but it's if the city right of way is ten feet, 12, 12 feet, whatever it is, fifty six feet. 56 feet. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. The problem we have been is some of our off. roads are not built see, on the road, actual roads. And of that's the problem, the right? And that's what I'm wanting to help properties. create a consistency of because there is there is some issues per our previous conversations, so, right? When a subdivision is developed, that right of way is identified in that in that plan. On that yeah, so we have variable plan. right of ways throughout the city? No. No. Yeah. Well, so, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because yes, we lines. actually do if we're <laughs> using your definition. So the road is not always built dead center in the middle of the right of way. Okay. In fact, Woodland Hills Drive is a perfect Way example off. of being terribly. I, I completely understand. My road that. keeps working its way over into my yard. Yeah. And so you've <laughs> got drifting. So, yeah. okay. You but cannot go based on asking at all. You really <laughs> have to be four laner identify <laughs> where is the right way. Now, my biggest problem with the fencing ordinance is how I can foresee that it would fundamentally change the look of Woodland Hills. Huge change. Because we already have it. You do know what the current ordinance is, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Because anyone can still put the fence up. They can put the fence. I don't think a lot of people could start building fences just as we put this thing. I, you, I, you want to, I, I think you I, I think they will. You want to preserve the front of the, the property. Uh, well, so I you restrict maybe because you restrict like fences front. coming forward of, for example, the plane, the front yeah, plane. I understand of what you're saying, Wayne, but keep in mind where I live. I know. It's, you know, in my neck of the woods, my my area, I only have three backyards. You know that I'm that I'm looking at, and so anyway, it there'd just, be fences up against those with yeah, you, and, and, and that's not what I want. So I'm, I'm against. So they currently can't do that, right? Yeah. You have to be five foot With a five off. foot gap. Yeah. So they can still put that fence just five feet for the back, which is you to me. Yeah. They can still do it if they want. I understand. Want. I'm just okay. not in favor of, I wasn't in favor of that for what it's worth. That helps me. That makes more sense to me. So I'm, I, it's not about the five foot to me, it's about the fence. I'm, I, I just would rather not have fences up here. Okay, fair point. You got seven. Oh, seven. Okay. Yeah. Leave yeah, you it's it's called seven. a site, site train. I think one of the things. Oh, Jody, how do you? You should. He's good. Yeah. He's good. Will you root yeah. yourself? I'm not new to myself. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, one of the things I think you need to remember, Dave, especially from what your comments are, right now, the way the fencing ordinance reads, they can put a fence around their property. 
Now it has to be 75% open. It can't be a closed fence. It can't be a visual barrier fence like we've allowed down in Four Seasons. And right now, the way the fencing ordinance reads, they can put a fence around their property. I understand, and as I just mentioned, Severin, I'm against that one too. I I just don't want fences in Woodland Hills because um, I look at the way Woodland Hills looks today, and then I remember what Orem looked like when I had fences everywhere, and I I don't like that look, and I like this look. So that's what I'm that's saying, Dave. Okay is that then you're going to have to change the fencing ordinance because the way it reads, they can put it up now. Okay. And the point is they haven't. Yeah, right. so the most people I have not. All right, well, I, I, I really this exercise was mostly about, I, I think that there was some frustration um, that you know we would say we want to amend the fencing ordinance and then the planning commission would come back with some amendments and then we would send it back and then it come back and forth I so I, I i think that there needs to be some sense of finality to this so i think that what was hoped for and, and wayne i hope that you feel like you've gotten the direction that that you're looking for mm -hmm. but i think that this needs to be the the final effort and if it yeah. passes it passes and if it doesn't it doesn't okay i think and it would take a step by step we won't come back to you with all these changes that need to be made let's let's take a step at a time and go forward and see yeah. if we have consensus or not with with what wants to be done and i can understand dave's position and you know it and i can understand the need for people who who truly do, do want to fence for whatever reason just making sure that we're consistent that i'm okay with it being on the property line because that five feet is is a, a waste of, of space in terms of i know they have we had it on there for a wildlife corridor um we know wildlife can pretty well jump over anything and um that that front plane is important to me because it maintains that level of consistency throughout the city that we're looking for my only concern was that now i know it's called a site triangle and if we can work that in, I would really greatly appreciate that. Okay. We'll come Karen. back again with something along those yes. lines. And okay. Oh, Severin has a question. Yeah, Severin. Uh, just for Carrie's uh, information, the front plane of the house, the restriction on the front plane of the house exists only in four seasons. There is nothing that says you can't have a fence beyond the front plane of the house in the rest of Woodland Hills. Right, and well, and I, I think that we should include And that's that. what would be added. Yeah, that's what I think, that's what I'm telling him. I would like that to be added for, for our ordinance to go just to the front plane of the house. See, I don't like the, the term front plane of the house anywhere in our ordinance because you don't know what the front is in a lot of homes. Well, I think and that would have good to be good examples fine. where you don't know I think we could put a definition put some in there because mm -hmm. because you're you're right. Some people, especially corner lots, might have the front facing a different direction than where the driveway comes in. Well, some right. So house is weird for the view. Mm -hmm. so, and so yeah. wherever it is, according to their street address, I would assume would be the front plane. That's of kind the of the way we look at. You know, that's wherever your driveway and that makes your an address the way it is. That's your front plane because that's what's facing the street. Yeah. And uh, this feels but, but that, this is, that's not true. Here. Okay, we'll, we'll give it one more shot okay. and come back and you know we can right. modify what we do or turn it all down or right, whatever, right. but we'll give it another shot. Yeah, I understand, right. Severin. I understand what you're saying. This front plane is usually where the front door is, but that's yeah, not necessarily right. in this site plan arrangement. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh you're still, you're still up here. They, 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 they it. it says it says and well so we have had um two very productive meetings with summit creek and um i will just say that anytime you're uh negotiating a contract um it's hard work uh really really hard work and 
um, you kind of have to go into it realizing that you're not going to get everything you want and they're not going to get everything they want. And somewhere in that middle is the right spot. Um, I feel like we're a lot closer to that right spot now than we were before. Um, some of the bigger issues that um, kind of the, the big rocks that we uh, were able to address was um, one was uh, easement access up to some 300 acres. And it was decided that that's a future thing anyway. So we just removed that from this development agreement altogether. So there, there's going to be no easement. Another one of the big contentions was um, the uh, access to trails. And um, Summit Creek is in kind of an interesting position because their trails aren't really theirs anymore. They're uh, the HOAs and the HOA is reluctant because of some concerns they have over potential litigation to just open them up to the public and maintenance and so forth. Uh, so that was one where we kind of had to go, hmm, well, what's the real goal? And the real goal is just to increase the number of uh, walking trails and so forth within the city. So Summit Creek has actually offered to um, allow residents to use both. They, they didn't really allow this, but the city has some property up above the water tanks, and then they have some property, and we would be able to build a trail across that. So it's just a different place for the um, for the trail access. Um, trying to think. So of, let's talk about that first. So so you're saying that uh, training some of, from the property above to be to be part of a new trail system. Mm -hmm. And Summit Creek is willing to uh, donate five hundred dollars per lot that is sold out of the new subdivision, which we figured would amount to roughly $40,000. Over time, right? Over time, but they're willing to um, initially give us kind of a, a, an advance on that money mm -hmm. of $10,000 so that we could build a, tra a trail system. Uh, that would go from right where to where? Where we think? Well, essentially up above the water tank. I'm going to just say it that way because we don't know. Okay. Because I'm sitting there thinking that steep part where. So they're asking, they, they've asked me like with uh, with the parks and trails to get the plats and identify easements and city property places where we can put trails. So um, that's what we need to do. That's so yeah. It, on it's, city property. City property or, or easement, yeah. Okay. Or, or an easement with some accrued. Or an easement. So. Okay. Because we and we also have to remember when we're looking at that, then only certain lots have trail easements on them. Others, uh, if you have an easement for utilities, that does not equal trail easement. Yeah, yeah. So just to be clear about that, and then also. So is that pretty clearly uh, uh, delineated on the plats? So, um, so the other thing is, rather than get bogged down in this, yeah. I agree it's a really good discussion, but it's a discussion that really needs to come when they actually have some trail ideas and they right, can right, say, right. You know, I'm just for those who may listen to this afterwards was we have residents where the general plan has shown a trail through their property where there is not a trail easement so I get calls quite a bit from residents who are have been upset by that wait and I so talked about to make that sure today. part of this is to uh, part of that then is to assure them that we are not trying to have eminent domain for a trail through the backyard. Right. And that we only go forward with those properties that have current trail easements or we would need to purchase a trail easement. Yeah, and also all, so, all of that process would definitely have to Right, exactly. Place. Just I'm glad you're looking at them. Yeah, and I, I actually discussed it with Wayne today, this morning, that because I had some of those same residents express concern to me when we were running. And, and so I told him that if we could adjust the general plan and move some of those that are on there that that would be something to look at too while we're doing this it would be helpful and then those who have trail easements that may have bought their property or home later and might not know that they have a trail that gives them a heads up yeah right in addition um 
And if we're looking at city property, just to remind you that we do have some mitigation happening on some city property. So make sure you coordinate that with Corbett so that we don't accidentally design something into. All I'm going to do project. is pull the plats, identify the property, and then we'll meet with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Coordinate. Okay. All right. Thank you. So anyway, back to the development agreement. Um, but as I said, I think that's a very important discussion to have. And, and it is ancillary to the development agreement. The development agreement had to come first. So anyway, um, I'm trying to think of any of the other big rocks that we kind of worked through. One of the bigger ones for Summit Creek was just, okay, now that we've vacated those roads, what exactly was the work that needed to be done? And so we had to identify which lots were actually, we needed to do the rock line ditches and so forth and so um, I believe we've done that. One thing I want to mention on that is as part of the development agreement, we did agree that the city, <clears throat> if a lot has not had a building permit issue, then when we issue the building permit, we will um, prorate um, some portion of charges for the improvements that are being done in that subdivision. Hmm. But the trigger, and it's really critical that we understand this, the trigger is the building permit. Because that's the only time the city really can collect money from someone. And so if they've already got a building permit, then Summit Creek's just going to have to do that work without any, any reimbursement. But if they don't have a building permit, the building permit happens after we have some idea of the, of the prorated cost, then that's when we'll add that to their building permit and then reimburse some of that portion of the cost. So from an administrative point of view, then do we have this all worked out or is this something that needs to be- We need to amend the fee schedule, right? Yeah, go yeah. ahead. You're talking about reimbursing for subdivision improvements? Yes. But the subdivision improvements are the responsibility of the developer. That is true. So why is the homeowner reimbursing the developer for what they're responsible for anyways? Um, and why are we collecting it? Because that would be done through an SID. <clears throat> right. Through a special improvement district. Um, okay. We didn't pass this through the lawyers, so that's still to be done. There's wording in there that says that we are legally able to do it. Yeah, so it's, anyway. Well, I mean, but I, I think that's great progress, but yeah, some of that might need to be higher now. Anyway, so that's the idea. Um, so with the, um, the agreement is, where it stands right now is we've, um, Summit Creek has it, they're giving it to their lawyer, their lawyer is going to finalize what they believe the wording is going to be. We will then pass it to our lawyers. They will look at it. And then after that, it will come to us. Um, well, it will come to the planning commission. And then after the planning commission, it will come to us. So that's, that's kind of the process. We're hoping that we can get this done. Excellent. Well, and Ben, thank you for your guys' uh, efforts. Thank you. Everything. Wayne, did you have something? Yeah. We want to. Uh, we want to give as soon as it clears the lawyers. We want to give the heads up copy to the to the council, so that they've got it in advance of our public hearing. Uh, if they have questions before it actually comes to the public hearing, they, we can address those or concerns that they have. Uh, so just to facilitate moving things forward. So I just want to let the council know that, that we'll, as soon as it clears the lawyers, we'll get a copy of them for them to look at, review, and digest. Great, thank you. All right, thanks David. Any other comments or questions? Okay, item 11. February and March 2022 financials. Can you get our um, question answered? I'm assuming that's what this is. Is this an answer is to this our question? Chris? Chris? Yes, and 
So I do have the questions answered. We have the new budget for 2022 ready to go. The mayor and I are meeting on that in the next couple of days to go over it. Um, I do have the email ready to send back to you on the questions, or excuse me, the answers to your questions, but I was hoping to send it at the same time with the budget. So um, it, it'll make more sense. Okay, yeah, and, and Chris is, uh, I, I've had a number of things. Chris has been talking to me about getting the, the, the budget review, but it's, it, I had to shut it off. So if you want to, you want to throw stones, you can throw them at me. Well, we can throw them at Chris, but it break the TV. Right, right. yeah, no, don't throw any of that TV. <laughs> throw away, throw away. <laughs> All right, so we'll we'll table that again, um, and that would be uh, item twelve too. I would say. And also table that one. Yeah. So we'll call budgetary items. We'll, we'll revisit. Okay, item thirteen. Uh, Council Member Hilliard, uh, can we get your report? Uh, yes. Yeah, so the nine one one service district. Uh, we we haven't met, and I'm actually we're going to be passing that assignment over to Doro, which we'll be voting on, and then I've taken on Stewart. And kind of in that place. Uh, Corbett and I have been working mostly Corbett though, because he's our fearless leader on all liquid waste. Right, Corbett? Um, <laughs> but we've been working on looking at what we can do there uh, to pull potentially maintenance and cleaning of the, the sewer to us. Um, this potentially could increase revenue okay. um, for us because that's the X I like to grind. Um, and also keep rates good for our, our residents. Because if we don't, then most likely Payson would just need to drastically raise our rates for those connected to sewer. So we're working, well, Corbett's working very hardly and hard, hard on that. <laughs> very hardly. Very, very hardly. Yeah, that was a um, yeah. um, Comes out. Depends on the day for Corbett. No, and then um, the Utah Valley. A solid waste district. I was actually on this. I'm the alternate for the the NUMA board. Um, NUMA is our new era. Sorry, the new era board, and that is our dump site. So the old Bayview is now new era. Um, and so they just we just passed a bond. So they're getting a 1.2 million dollar bond to do some renovations for staffing needs and also increase in funds to offset. Um, some of the inflation costs that they're having. Um, they projected that out into the future and that is looking quite good. Um, so our rates should not be going up as they promised, so that is good. And then I've got a board meeting with um, SUVSWD um, on Thursday. And you heard the groundbreaking, so that was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, and then I completely spaced being there. I was so mad, but yes, we've broke ground on the new transfer station, which is going to be a huge game changer. Do we have an estimate on how long that will take to build? I believe 18 months. It's a big, big, big facility. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. All right. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Council Member Kennison. All right. We have been busy. There's a lot going on. The Fire EMS Expo is May 21st, a Saturday from 10 to 1. We look forward to that. We've got a lot planned. Uh, kids, get your kids here because uh, we'll land the helicopter and get out here and, and there'll be a bomb dog demonstration. There's all kinds of things. Free going lunch. On. Don't yeah, free, free lunch. Free, free, free <laughs> like hot dogs. <laughs> no, yeah. So uh, we, we are busy planning that. Um, the CWPP, uh, I need to tell you a little story. Um, we were one of the early adopters of the, of this, the, community, of the Community Wildland Protect, Protection Program. And with that program came our chipping. And we've carried that chipping program forward several years now, and it's gained nationwide attention, what we're doing in our city as far as wildland uh, urban interface planning and, and and execution. So um, Craig has some uh, some contacts, and it's turned out that there is a, a nationwide meeting being held in Colorado here the first week of June that we were one of two cities from Utah invited to attend, all expenses paid. And so 
Craig's asked me to go with him and we're going to go there and it is an amazing deal. Um, they, uh, the other city, remember we're one of the hills, the other city is Provo. So, so, so we're really honored with, with that opportunity. We had a, a phone call today with the group of attendees that, that were, were planning this. Uh, we're to create a video showing the highlights of our city. So we're planning that. We're going to cover a little bit in this video, the expo, the brush piles in existence around the city are going to be a big hit because it'll just show. If you haven't been up to the park and seen what our crew has done, yeah. we've got some brush at, that we're going to share pictures and video of that with this group. Um, we're going to highlight our department members, the volunteers that they are, and we're going to also highlight our, our excellent fire equipment for a community of our size that yeah. we have. So we'll we'll make a, a nice video for that to, to share with them. But what, what the plan is... Can you is, show, share that video with all of us? Like, yes, there, because I yes. think there are other people who yeah. it would be nice for us to Good be able idea. to share. Like when I go to my emergency management uh -huh. meetings or some of those other things, it would be nice to... We, we think share. it would be high caliber. <laughs> Or you know, I think good quality, and so love yeah, I, I would love to share that. Um, the, the goal of attending this type of meeting is to is to help other cities on one side, but also to gain. Um, we'll become alumni of this FBX group, they're called, and and uh, we will we'll come back with a better plan. And, and ideas from other cities to to improve on our plans for our own city as far as uh, keeping this place from burning down will it help us with future grants saying that we will present her at this conference we will yeah, yeah just just the participation in this um is something we're really thrilled about uh like i said you, you don't get to go to this type of thing without without yeah, a lot of work on, on craig's part to be honest with you to, to get to do it um, so that not all came about because of CWPP and, and our, our citizens, we have big meetings in this culture <laughs> right there and, and it went on and on and, and we came up with a really good plan and, and, uh, we moved forward from that day and, and it's been pretty, very successful, I think, in the process. So I'm really proud of our citizens right now for the brush piles we're seeing around the city. Uh, we still plan on Utah County chipping those piles, but a lot of the times they get busy fighting a fire somewhere and it, it's turned over to our department and we will chip those piles. And if you haven't done, if you haven't run a chipper, it's killer so work. It's hard. <laughs> it was really a workout. So, but we, uh, Craig's taken responsibility for that. If and we have definitely yeah. told everyone that once it goes by your street, it's done. Yeah. You know, we're not coming back around. Yeah. So, uh, so we're just proud of the city's, the citizens' uh, participation in removal of brush every time we offer the, the chipping thing. So that's all I have there. All right, thank you. All right, uh, number one. Okay, so um, South Valley Animal Shelter, we have our licensing clinic this Saturday. It will be here at the city center. Can you send me that email again? For some reason, I cannot find that in my email. It's on the city website. Yeah, because I wanted to post it on social media. I don't have it in my email and either. I, I think Jody has it. Yeah, I searched everywhere and I can't find where it came from. I don't from. have this in my email either. Um, <laughs> it's this Saturday from 10 to 12. You're supposed to sign up online. Um, they told me that whenever it's at Woodland Hills, it don't get very good turnout. That they get a lot when it's in Elkridge, but for some reason, when we have it here, not very many people. Because nobody wants to say that their dog isn't licensed because they're keeping them at home. That's one of those. I know. I said it's maybe, one of those girl things. Maybe right? we have a little bit of a rebellious spirit up here. Why do you care if my dog has a license? It's on right. right. So the girl's <laughs> gonna he's gonna volunteer to come and make sure that the bay is cleared out. Give you room. Yeah. I'm always calling on Doral to help me with those things. But anyway, so he'll be here to help me do that, and um, we'll get set up in there. Um, so hopefully we'll get some people. They they'll microchip them and everything. You can do it. 
Um, they just did their new budget and our amount only went up like $400. So the city's like Provo City, it went up almost 30 grand. So I'm grateful for our population. Yeah, and how much use and how much you use them. So they, she did a whole calculation with percentages and I was supposed to really look small. And I was grateful for that. Um, just the other thing, just kind of a note item is that Utah County actually just raided a breeder order and they rescued 68 dogs. And so yeah, they're that all crazy in Spanish Fork. And they're all at the shelter. Um, and they're being, they have to keep them because it's a pending court case. And so they're evidence. And so they have all these dogs and you can, it hits you because we had a meeting last week. Like when you walk in the door, the smell is extra strong. Um, but they have Cavaliers, Goldens and Corgis that are purebreds that will be being sold for a hundred bucks. They will be spayed and neutered. But um, if you've always dreamed of wanting one of those, keep checking the website because they're going to be released. Uh, as soon as they can. Yes. Ah, so, but we don't know when that will be. No, <laughs> if you really want one. No. I have plenty of dogs already, so I'm good. Um, and then just um, for PTR, we haven't met, so, and I know it's not on the agenda, but I just wanted to say we did have um, a citizen who came forward and volunteered to help write grants if we can um, identify a good grant. So, we were excited for that. Great, thank you. Sarah, yeah. I need to point out that the one online has council member Malkovich on it, but this one that's printed. No, I know. I was going to uh, invite uh, Carrie to speak. I was just waiting to do it alphabetically, but yeah, uh, that's thank fine. you for the heads up. No All right, well, council member Malkovich. All right, um, Utah Lake. Um, Kind of been a little bit where we've done some stuff with the technical community and the steering committee on, um, which is the science panel, getting ready for a lot of things that are happening um, with studies. Um, of course, algae blooms are always a consideration. Every freshwater lake in the state has algae blooms. We just hear about Utah Lake more. Not that they're any bigger than any other lake, it's just that now they're more noticeable. But um, there is treatments going on. There's several several different companies that are doing treatments on the lake um, as those come up. Um, there are um, some increase in um, accessibility. The, the life jacket program is in full force. Woodland Hills participated in that. If you have um, any life jackets that you'd like to donate or money to, to keep those updated. It, they're at every access point. So if somebody comes and says, oh, I'm gonna have a board, they can get a life jacket because a lot of the people who are, they're finding are the ones that are in small fishing boats or on the paddle boards and they get out just enough offshore and then that wind kicks up. And so they're trying, they're hoping that people will utilize this life jacket program uh, we're going on a tour, I think it's next week, of the Provo River Delta Project. Um, but mostly it's, it's the studies right now. Of, there's always hundreds of studies from universities all over the place because it's one of the best ecosystems in the nation um, for studying plants and, and wildlife and fish and the migratory bird option, you know, the, there is some stuff that's going on because Provo just opened up their new airport and expansion, which is very exciting, but migratory birds and airplanes don't go well together. So they're trying, they've been trying for a while to get those to move to another location rather than Provo Bay. So that's an ongoing issue on what they do to keep those birds away from the, the runways. So those are two, that's kind of Utah Lake. Um, I wanted you to know that Prior to, well, in the winter of 2020, um, there was a lot of plans for celebration of, of, the, of women giving the right to vote in 1920 to 2020. And there was this whole statewide campaign and every city was supposed to participate. So we signed up to participate. Well, then COVID happened and we weren't able to participate. Nobody was able to. And so they got back with me um, recently and said, we're doing this traveling exhibit and we would like Woodland Hills to have a chance. Some people are hosting it in their libraries or wherever, um, just to showcase that we were the first woman 
we had the first women vote in our in, in the nation. We had the very first woman state senator. We had um, all these other firsts for some strong women in, in Utah to have this whole exhibit. So I chose um, that we will start next Wednesday in our city center somewhere here that we will put in the library. That we will. So we're going to put it somewhere in this section. Jody and I will determine that because we want it to be here so that when people come to the expo, oh, they can also take a look at it. And also, those for those of you who don't know, there are six artists in town who are having an artist tour yes, the 19th, 20th, and 21st. They want us to kind of piggyback with them, so they're going to advertise it on their posters and their stuff. So if people go around, um, they're going to have a, they're hoping to have a food truck at the park, but then also advertise that our exhibit's going to be here. People want to stop in and see it, and then it will continue to the day after council, our next council meeting. So if anyone wants to come, it will be available, and you know they might want to bring their achievement day girls or. Jack yeah, Kirk Richards, he's, yep. he's the one that organized that. Yes, he, he has done it for years for his own personal tour, but he has now expanded to have it for six of the artists who live in our community. I think it's going to be a great event. So I just wanted you to know that we've added that Better Days exhibit of Better Days 2020, and it will be here at the City Center. Sweet. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Member Pratt. So we have not met. We have a meeting scheduled. It was going to be in two days on Thursday, but now it's moved to two weeks from now. So really don't have anything to report. Okay. All right. And uh, as for me, uh, the MAG COG meetings were canceled again this month. Um, just briefly, I, I did go to um, Corvallis, Oregon. Uh, Corvallis. Corvallis. Yeah. Uh, I'll leave it to the Oregonian to correct me. Is Oregonian right? Corvallis. Yeah, that's correct. It's Corvallis. Okay, well, I just saw it on a map. No one <laughs> You're right. I mean, the in Corvallis. All right. So, anyway, I went. I'm offended. <laughs> Although it's Oregon State, so I don't know. Well, it's I, I know people that uh, are from out of state and they'll refer to what I've always called Alta as Alta. Oh, so, oh boy. Uh, well, it's, it's all a regional thing. Julie, hurricane. Yeah. It's a hurricane. Right. All right. But anyway, Corvallis uh, is uh, the uh, uh, headquarters of um, New Scale, which is a, uh, a, a company that is developing small nuclear reactors. And so uh, SESD buys its power from an organization called UMS. UMS sent uh, a number of the SESD directors to tour this facility, um, and it was it was fascinating. The, I, I like I mentioned, uh, I, I think that uh, it's it's very exciting the prospect of, of nuclear energy. I mean, it's 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 and it's uh, kind of the new darling of even the green movement, um, but. That, and that one is expected to go live. The one that they're building in Idaho is expected to go live in 2029. Takes forever to build, and that's the they've been looking at that for quite a long time. And the people's like, well, I'm trying to work in Utah, and it's just going to be so far down the road. But I think they're looking closer at it now. Yeah, well, and and that is actually my my bigger point is that I was at the SESD meeting today, and uh, and the energy market is very challenging yeah. right now. And uh, you know they, they're having to buy uh, some of this sort of premium priced energy just because some of the resources are either they've been mothballed or you know Glen Canyon Dam is drying. It doesn't have any water. Uh, yeah, yet. so I mean, they're it, working on doing that. Well, I hope they succeed because you know they, it presents some some real challenges, especially when you consider you know some of the gaps in communities, current resource systems go offline, and then. Even this nuclear facility, I mean, even if they get it done in 2029. But the, I, I do think that, you know, it would be important for us as residents, you know, they were showing some of the, the numbers in terms of energy costs. I mean, July, obviously, a lot of electricity is used. They should let more of us have solar then. 
<laughs> yeah, have you ever find out why I'm just why saying. SCSD isn't letting our citizens have it? From what I understand, they there say is they no. Are on your side, but yeah. the citizen calls, they're not letting. Yeah, so they, they've got a moratorium. They said there's a moratorium, they're not letting them. So there's a disconnect somewhere at SCSD. Well, I, I, I would, I, I, I can't speculate as to why that would be the case, other than, I mean, because, uh, you know, the, the, the resource issue is something that they're looking very closely at. So it, it might be that it's a strain on other aspects of the infrastructure. I'm just guessing. I have no idea. But but there may be a reason that has. I mean, it's. I I, I don't believe that it would be related to them trying to kind of corner the energy market. I, I would imagine it would be more because <laughs> they're not going to make as much money. Yeah, they don't make they don't make anything off of it actually. It's <laughs> actually that is the biggest freaking lie I've ever heard. Don't think so? Because I pay $26 to SESD every month that has nothing to do with my power, has everything to do with infrastructure. So they've divided the billing up because I do have solar. So do I. And so you pay the same thing. Mm -hmm. I get two bills. Yeah. I get two bills. One is for the actual energy use in my home. And the other is for infrastructure. So please don't buy into their whining about not making any money because they've now separated it out so that they get money. They get some money. Isn't it part of it though that I've heard from them was about the buying power to put on the grid or something like that that really is a problem for them? Yeah, I you know. And that's again, it's all speculative. There's so much FUD around this mm -hmm. because. Again, when you actually get into it, yeah, there's there's some cost to buying the power and the power fluctuates in price. But that's, I mean, you and I experience the same thing when we go to the gas pump. Right. So I don't know what the issue is. Well, I, the only reason I bring it up is just because with diminished resources, I mean, there, there could be a spike. And, and that was addressed in the meeting today that, you know, I think that the, the general consensus is going to be that like gasoline, mm -hmm. you know, like like everything else. I mean, you know, you're gonna you're gonna see a spike. But I I, I did think it was at least something to be mindful of. And, and I don't know if there's something, you know, I guess if you warn everybody, then it just maybe it helps, but maybe it also just makes people so matter longer. Bigger, maybe it's right. better to just take it uh, as a singular item. The much bigger threat to SESD is South Utah County development. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. The they're, growth, they're really worried the because growth the growth is going to shrink their service their customer service base dramatically. Well, and if they're not after they lost the planning for that, they will fail, and they'll fail pretty quickly. Uh, now, so I, I mean, I they, this they is not really the forum to talk about SESD management, but I mean, I, I. Uh, I mean, I'm happy to relay your concerns to them. Yeah, I mean, they, they, so whether they had lost the lawsuit or not, which I predicted two years ago, they would lose. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is the reason SESD existed was because they were a rural electric, electric district. Right. When you switch from rural to urban, and you have cities like Salem and Payson and Spanish Fork who deliver their own electricity and they keep annexing more and more and more and more land. Right. SESD was always destined to shrink. And if they're not thinking about that, if they're not planning for that, then they need to be. That's their bigger threat. Right. No, I mean, I, I, that's no surprise that you've got cities that have taken power in house. I mean, that, that's, uh, I mean, that's what some of the lawsuits were about. That's what, you know, there, there's some. some well, and, and we should, we should, I'm not saying do it right away, but we should be thinking. We should way. be thinking, actually, yes, I agree. Okay, but here's the thing is you have to pay for the infrastructure. I mean, you have to buy it from SESD. We don't just get a, a serious control. Here's the, here's the dirty yeah. little secret. We already do. We do. When the but what I'm saying is like it is significant investment for us to assume ownership of it. We would have to buy. It. I I understand, but that's that's kind of the weirdness. And maintain it. When when we get a subdivision built, the developer puts that infrastructure in. 
because that's SESD requires. They don't pay for that. They don't put that infrastructure in, the developer does. And then he gives it to SESD. So then we're going to end up buying it buying something from SESD that they never paid for in the first place. Now, is that true of the transformers and the, the substations? No, that's where it, it, they do actually pay for that. But the reality is all the wires that go up these streets, SESD never paid for. But they do maintain them. Okay. They also depreciate it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is an anti-SESD crowd. I get it. <laughs> no, I don't. Well, think I'm not anti. anti. I'm just. It's it's one of those things that S. Again, we had these meetings what about two, three years ago with SESD, and they, you know, they they came in and they're like, we, you know, we save you people and all this, and I'm just like, no, we really don't. When they wanted us to sign a 50 year contract, that's what it was. We we came in and said we don't feel comfortable with a 50 year contract because we know that things are going to change in this valley in the next 50 years, and that was a little bit of a concern at that time. And so as we have progressed with them through the years, we of course appreciate the the service. We appreciate. Um, all of the uh, timely maintenance and, and everything that goes into our citizens receiving their power. But we also saw that writing on the wall when, when the lawsuit happened that was about, not about us, but about that west side of the valley and that lawsuit with the other cities and how that was affecting us because those other cities were coming down on us and we're like, we're not SDSD, we are a partner. And we, we get that service, we have one board member, but we don't make the decisions for SGSD. And so that's where that whole discussion came. And I think that um, we have to be, as their, you know, Elk Ridge and Woodland Hills are their biggest customers. And so I think we do have to be cognizant of, of that, um, that dynamic that may be coming in the next 20 years to make sure that we're prepared. Yeah, I mean, if, I, they, if something happens and we have to assume that uh, to be our own power, power broker, if we are our own power broker, are we are we preparing ourselves so that when that time might be presented to us, that we're prepared and it's not just that, oh my gosh, what just happened, right? Right. So, well, I mean, I I think that we could go down that road at any time. I mean, it's just a matter of buying the other yeah. so it's yeah, and, and making sure that we can maintain that. that. Yeah. Which I think is no small task, but uh, you know. No, it's not. Again, I don't think we're in a position to do that anytime in, in the near future. But I, no. think, I think we have to be open. Yeah, we have to have our eyes wide open and not just take, I don't know, taking for granted is not the right words, but SESD provides a service, it's a commodity. As with any commodity, I can buy flour at Smith's or I can buy it at Costco or I can buy it at Macy's, right? But it's still flour. Electricity is just electricity. And while I appreciate the fact that SESD provides it today, I would hope that their board, at which you're a member, and that's the only reason that we're talking about this, is thinking what happens when this entire valley is built out. What yeah, is, no, I, 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 I don't think there's, there's any blindness to that reality. I mean, you, you've got Pace and you've got Salem, you've got Spanish Fork that are all uh, very aggressively gobbling up all unincorporated areas around them. So, I, I, you know, but, but then there are also cities that are seeking to incorporate that would utilize them. I mean, they were talking today that uh, Spring Lake is looking at incorporating, and you know that would be an option for them. So, uh, you know, I, I I don't think that it's just fine wine. I I think that but it's, it's something that really expensive. Yeah, no, and I and I think that there's the more patchwork they try to be <laughs> right. So. Well, and it's going to get expensive this summer, yeah. which was really the only the thing. So the, recommend, the, the recommendation that I gave SCSD two years ago was. <laughs> You should be working with Spring at Salem, Payson, and Spanish Fork on a clear transition plan. 
so that you're not fighting them over turning stuff over that you're at, you've actually planned for it. Because it's gonna happen. Yeah. Just plan for it. Or we need a nice small nuclear plant. That's by the water. Okay. Put it behind your house. Yeah, everybody's starting to house from us. Yes. I was actually when I was at that meeting, I was thinking, because they're small. I mean, they they're not quite that small, but uh, <laughs> They're small. It would, it would be something where you know you have facilities here that could be a very large percentage of Salem's budget comes from their electricity. So uh, yeah, no, I know. Well, that's 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 the real incentive for these cities to bring it in houses. It's yeah. it's a revenue stream. So big and I mean, we're trying to be creative. Yeah. Nothing like I did. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> I know. Here's no, the I thing. Mean, I, 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 I mean, my first loyalty is Woods and Woodland Hills. <laughs> but I, 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 to me, there are some significant barriers to us ever assuming yeah. that role. Uh, it, it seems like yeah. there's a significant barriers. There is. New job for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shree Brown. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> item 14 possible items. For upcoming city council meetings. Wow. I thought we were going to, um, I, I mentioned this before that we would have a budget discussion every time, not just a you know update on the proposed budget, but which has gone our work session, but actually something that had to do with our budget so that we can have spot times where we're not necessarily voting on anything, but just throughout the year that we're discussing a particular line item or a particular department or something like that so that our budget doesn't come down to it's March. Let everybody dive into the whole entire thing and then then we have to wait, 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 wait. And then sometime in May, we get the revised version because we have to vote on it in June. But to have this ongoing discussion all the time, at least small portion of it on our, on our work session, so that each year, it's not just a big dive. We've already been discussing things. So that, I don't know. I just think that would be helpful. I, as I've talked to other cities, how they do it, and that's basically what they do. It's a year-long process. They, they might have a budget retreat, but it's based on what they've discussed all year prior. Right, and, and I don't have any objection to that. And Chris and I talked about that. Um, the one thing I don't want city council meetings to become is every council meeting is a budget meeting where we're going through each expenditure. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't want to do that. And, and so, I mean, if you have particular areas that you want to discuss, I mean, this can be, you can give me input on that and we can discuss it. But I mean, I don't see much point in me just randomly selecting one item for discussion every week. I think that if there's something that we can, uh, you know, that, that, that's an area that merits further discussion, then, then okay. let's get it on the agenda. And I'm happy to do that. But, you know, I, I don't want to go through the whole budget every every council. Oh, no, no, that's not that's not what my intent was. It's just to say, OK, where are we? Because we get those updates, right? Sixty six percent has been spent on here. Yeah. So what is what is that? Sixty six percent and where do we still need to go? Or have we seen now that we're at forty five percent? Have we seen that we may need to adjust, not necessarily open the budget, but to say, you know, as we're looking forward, um, I just think that saving it all for the end is very a very emotional process because right. it's who has needs, who has wants, and we haven't necessarily collected the data other than percentages used throughout the year. I, think I don't also know if that sometimes makes sense. It helps to just because if we have a question and we don't have it on the agenda, you know, we can't discuss it. Right. So I just don't but you can bring it up as a potential agenda item. I mean, so if, if there is a question, or you can send Chris an email and ask him about it at any time, too. So can we get those questions answered next time for the that we asked about the March? No, yeah, February. I those think that's February. Those are February's, but yeah, Chris said you he has those answered. He's just waiting to meet with the mayor and then he'll send them all to us. Okay. So well, assuming yeah, it's it's, it's, it's the, the yeah, the, the answers aren't related to the um the budget that we were right. discussing but right. well, i think chris was going to touch with the 2022 right. revision right and 2023 right and so those two items so yeah but i'm yeah. he's got those questions answered we do need to have a public hearing on both of those yeah in the next the month. next month we have to have a public hearing on it okay 
The first meeting in June usually is when we have the public last meeting. Now it's the last meeting. Before. Well, we have to have it approved before the last meeting. So we no, have to we usually have one in May, a public meeting, and then you have one in June where you discuss it, and then the next one. We'll approve yeah. It. <laughs> but, so. but we usually have to have it because of the dates of when the state wants us to have the budget in that our council meeting is usually like the day or two after. And so we usually have to take that vote on the first, our first council meeting in June. Okay. So you just might want to look at those dates to make sure that we have adequate time to send out those two public hearings. Okay. Uh, Chris, well, I'm sure that you're cognizant of uh, those deadlines and, and we'll be able to meet them. Yeah, what we should do is we should really have the um, the budget hearing next week or next council meeting, and then if nobody shows, then council can vote on it. But if somebody comes with some compelling changes, then you might want to hold it till the first week in June. But it'd be nice to get it done. This morning, it's seven days. Oh, it's only seven days uh, for state code ten dash. Uh, 10-5-108, um, that changed in 2021. Oh, okay. So, it so it's only seven days now? It's seven days before okay. the hearing. So we could put both of them on the next city agenda and um, have 2022 and uh, 2023 for public hearing, but you don't have to officially take a vote on it. I would recommend doing it if there's no big changes, but if there is, then we can postpone it till the, the vote until the June meeting, but it has to be voted on. And remember, we're still potentially voting on just a temporary budget, depending on what you guys want to do with taxes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I right. do need to have those budgets go in hand before I post it. Yeah. yeah. 2020, 2023 was given out already, but I can I'd report that again, not much has changed since the finance committee meeting and no more additional recommendations but i'll be happy to send those to you and the mayor and i are meeting on the 2022 budget and as soon as he gives his approval on that then we'll move forward and does that give us adequate time jody uh as long as i have them by next monday so this upcoming monday yes mm -hmm. okay well chris that is not gonna because if you and i are meeting on tuesday yeah We'll have to talk offline and, and uh, figure out a, a different time for that then. Okay, that's great. All right. Okay. Anything else? No pressure. <laughs> yeah. That's good to be clear. Your hair looks a little grayer lately. So this is no, I, I, I can see myself aging in <laughs> Change six months. jobs. You got it. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, part time gig. You call it a side hustle. Yeah. Side <laughs> side Are you a little stressed there? Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I guess you could say that. Throw in a few lawsuits and we're, we're good. Yeah, no, no, I know. And a few more friends. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess that's why we do what we do, right? So, so that's why you read that for me. Well, look at Dave. He used to be really dark hair before he started. Yeah, and I used to be <laughs> a lot younger. Um, another thing that we certainly this is not like an urgent thing, but we really ought to be um, doing codification periodically, probably every two years at a minimum. Okay. Just because as we pass ordinances, um, the new website is super helpful. So. It's great that we list them and we have them on the new website. So it's really easy for people to read, but it still does require people to go to the codified document and then go through the ordinances that we've passed to see if any changes have been made. Yeah. That's the way they have to do it. David, actually, yeah. the last time it was codified was they updated it um, with the 2021 30 ordinance. So it's been updated through 2021. So now 2022 are the only ones that they'll do it and then they'll do it each at the end of each year. That's oh, what I was okay. gonna So they'll That's update it at the end of each year. And then we take the, like the 2022 ordinances will all go in a PDF zip file and then 2023 will follow underneath it. So if you look okay, at the website- Okay, so it's automatically being updated? Yeah, at the end of each year. 
end okay. of the year, which is great. Yay. So hopefully. And that's good. Right. Those changes make it to our website, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and it's a more, link. More importantly, yeah, they make it to the codifiers website because they host all of our code on yeah. the website that is searchable and everything. Right. Okay. No, okay. Okay. Good, good, good suggestion. Thank you. And thanks, Joey. Okay. Well, uh, with that, so we're going to make a motion to adjourn this portion. All right. It's just a work session. We don't have to make any motions. Oh, we can just we adjourn. Just, yeah, yeah, we just we, we don't just, normally have adjourned after a work session. Just, don't we take a break? Yeah, yeah we we'll take, take a break. break. Oh, all right. So we don't. All right. Well, you <laughs> have to right. adjourn to a break. Don't worry. You it's have okay. control over us. You can say whether we can have a break or not. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let's reconvene at seven forty then. All right, let's uh, resume. Uh, call the city council meeting to order. We'll have a pledge of allegiance by council member Kiniston, followed by an invitation by council member Hillier. Everyone would like to rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our dear Father in heaven, we are grateful for this wonderful nation that we live in. And we pray for our leaders that, that lead us, that they may be able to be guided by thee and listen to thee for the betterment of the citizens of our great country. We are also very grateful this time for our wonderful city and for the wonderful residents we have here and for those that strive so hard to, to help make our city even better. We're especially grateful for our volunteers. We're grateful for their sacrifice and service. We pray that they will be protected as they serve our great community. We're grateful for our staff and for our wonderful mayor. We're grateful for their sacrifice as well from their families, for the time and dedication and love and passion they have for our city. We pray that that will bless them. We pray at this time that as we come together for the city council meeting, that that will guide us, that we'll be able to make the decisions, that will give us the most um, longevity and help us plan for our future so that the city may be able to grow in accordance to thy will and that we may be able to do what we need to for the best benefit to the residents here. We leave these, we leave these things and we say these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Uh, public comments. Public? Ben? <laughs> I should have come prepared. Yeah, no, it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> All right. I'm good. Thanks. And Looks like nobody uh, remotely. Okay, uh, item 16 and 17 consent agendas. Uh, City Council minutes for April 12, 2022, and April 26, 2022. And I get a motion to approve said minutes. I'll make a motion. Okay, a motion by Council Member Hilliard. I'll second it. A second by Council Member Lunt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, uh, item 18, ordinance amending city code 1121, 1149, and 11510. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the amendments as proposed. Summon. Motion by Council Member Malkovich. I'll second that. Second by Council Member Pratt. Uh, Council Member Malkovich. Yes. Council Member Hilliard. Yes. Council Member Pratt. Yes. Council Member Kiniston. Yes. Council Member Lund. Yes. Motion carried. Item 19, ordinance amending 10 to 1, definitions for yard, front, side, and rear. 
entertain a motion for adoption of that amendment. I'll make a motion. Okay, motion by Council Member Munt. I'll second that. And a second by Council Member Kingston. Council Member Malkovich? Yes. Council Member Hilliard? Yes. Council Member Pratt? Yes. Council Member Kingston? Yes. Council Member Lund? Yes. Motion carried. Item 20, ordinance amending the title of the city development and construction standards. Okay, motion by Council Member Pratt. Well, second by, second by Council Member Hilliard. Council Member Malkovich. Yes. Council Member Hilliard. Yes. Council Member Pratt. Yes. Council Member Kiniston. Yes. Council Member Lund. Yes. Motion carried. Item 22, resolution. <clears throat> 21. Oh, oh, excuse me. Yeah, we just did 20. Please. Okay, yeah, I checked that out. Sure. Thank you. Okay, I have 21 ordinance amending portions of city code titles 4, 8, 9, 10, and 11 as proposed. I'll make a motion to approve that. Okay, second. motion by Council Member Pratt and second by Council Member Malkovich. Council Member Malkovich? Yes. Council Member Hilliard? Yes. Council Member Pratt? Yes. Council Member Keniston? Yes. Council Member Lund? Yes. Motion carried. All right, uh, resolution approving March 2022 check disbursements. Okay. Were we going to table that? Yeah, one? I thought we said in the work session we were tabling. Yeah. Okay, then item 23 resolution appointing Doral Keniston to the 9 11 Special Service District. I'll make a motion. Okay. <laughs> Council Member Hilliard. I'll second. Second by Council Member Malkovich. Uh, resolution is not a roll call, right? Correct. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? You're near an eye out of you. Oh, I think different. we need a speech. That's different. Yeah. I, I got my speech ready. It's <laughs> <laughs> going privately to bed. <laughs> no, I think they'll be. <laughs> okay. well, thank you for your willingness to serve. It fits with everything else. It does. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, that concludes uh, the city council meeting open session. Um, and I would like to propose that we enter into a closed session. For what purpose? For the purpose of discussing legal matters and also, um, what was the other one? Uh, Number one. Yeah. I don't want individuals care to professional competence, physical or mental health. I'll make a motion to uh, enter into closed session. Okay, motion by Council Member Pratt. I'll second that. Second by Council Member Kinniston. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, then we move into a closed session. Thanks, so we're ben. keeping you out. No, it's fine. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Thanks for being here. I have a feeling I'm going to talk about my profession. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, we're worried about your physical health. Right? <laughs> 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 so, what is legal first? Yeah. Just yeah. an interesting update. Just one second. Jody has the it's been toasting here all week. Depending on what meeting they had earlier, but Terry comes just a little more. Well, it is set. Uh, can we get a motion to close? I make a motion. Okay, a motion by uh, Council Member Lund to adjourn. All in favor? We don't okay. have to have a second on it. Uh, yeah, all in favor. Aye. 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 Warm in here, guys. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> there was a lot of hot air going.